No more Mike. So you got a fancy question. You got fancy. Yeah. What do you see in LSU? Um, an athletic, talented team. They're probably as, as long and as athletic as, as any group that we'll face all season along their front line. It, it's anchored by Johnny O'Brien. We're all very familiar with him. Uh, he's developed into the player that we had envisioned when we were recruiting him. Terrific low post score. Uh, a guy that commands a double team or at least a lot of attention uh, in that low post area. And then they've added some pieces around him, starting with Jordan Mickey, one of the fabulous freshmen that seemed to proliferate college basketball in, in this day and age. He's a long, athletic kid who's leading the SEC in, in block shots. And then a Jarrell Martin, who they're playing some at the three, some at the four. He was a McDonald's All-American. Uh, a Louisiana native who at six foot nine really gives you some size issues if they play him at that three spot. How hard is it to defend them if they go to that, that big lineup? Well, it's going to create some, some, some concerns from a matchup standpoint for us, uh, but we'll have to devise a game plan to give our guys a chance. How do you guys do a better job of uh, cutting off penetration than you did against State? You know, we've got we've to gotta understand who the drivers are and who the shooters are. To me, defense is about two things. It's about effort, first and foremost, and then angles. You can't have one without the other, and, and we've got to do a better job in both those areas of understanding personnel, scouting. That's the reason we spend so much time in trying to give our guys the information that they need from a scouting standpoint, and then playing proper angles. It's been an issue with this team, not only from a defensive standpoint, but from a rebounding standpoint. A lot of times, I think we've put the necessary effort into putting ourselves in a position, and then we just don't play the right angle. So that's something we've got to keep working on. I know it might seem like a simple question, but how important is it to protect home court in the SEC moving forward? It's vital if we have any aspirations of playing significant basketball in March. It's vital, and, we, and this group hasn't done a very good job on it to this point, and hopefully that will improve. You've talked so much about your front court all year, and it's been something that you've had to work with, but when you look at Johnny and think, you know, he could be in that front court too, is it kind of hard not to look back and think, oh, what could have been? Well, I would certainly like for him to be in the red, white, and blue tomorrow night, but it is what it is. I've, you know, that battle was lost a long time ago. Uh, he's a terrific player. He's a good kid, and I'm, and I'm happy to see him have success. When you got Marshall back after the opener, you had him come off the bench for a while. Do you follow that same plan now, or does he go right back? In no, the he goes right back in the starting lineup. We're going to play our best players. Some of the younger, you talk about some of the younger guys on your front line uh, after the game against Mississippi State. Could there be a possibility for even more minutes for guys like Saez and Colby, especially against LSU? Well, we're trying. I, you know, with Dwight, it was unusual in that because he had the injury, he's just now rounding into shape physically as well as having an understanding of what we're trying to do. I don't want to put him in a position where he hurts our team or, he, or he's not ready for the minutes that, that I would like to give him. So that's a, a work in progress. You know, Sebus, A.J. Bear. We're going to continue to mix and match and, and see who's the best for that particular matchup, as well as who's performing the best. At the end of the day, we're all in a, in a, in a performance and production business, and you you got to produce. Um, so I'm putting guys in there that I think can produce. And then, you know, Anthony, I thought, gave us some quality minutes at the four uh, against State, and that's something we'll continue to explore. Andy, have you had conversations with DeMarco, and, and can, you, can you get more out of him? I'm trying. You know, DeMarco's heart's in the right place, and he's got a big, strong, physical body. Um, again, ultimately, it comes down to production. You know, I, I, I demand of him what I demand of all of our front court guys. First and foremost, defend. Give us a presence in the paint. Rebound the ball and make layups and free throws. I don't think that's very demanding, but sometimes it's easier said than done. You've spoken about Kobe being kind of a, a wild card, if you will. How do you project him? What kind of player can he be? He's a big, strong, athletic kid. I think he gives you a defensive presence with some block shots at the basket. You know, even though this team has blocked a lot of shots, not as many at the basket as we had last year with Reg. I think Dwight gives us some of that. Where is Janari in terms of his development? He's getting better. Uh, he, I thought the shots that he made, the plays that he made against Auburn were crucial. I think it helped his confidence. It, it certainly helped my confidence in him. He's a guy that uh, in certain situations as it relates to matchups, as it relates to the defense that our opponent is playing, we can certainly stick him in and I think he can help us. What's really held him back from getting meaningful minutes? You know, uh, lack of experience and the fact that, that I think the game's going really, really fast for him uh, on both sides. Have you been pleased with Derek so far? You know, I was really pleased early. I had to play him extended minutes, uh, really a lot of minutes. With, with Marshall's absence, we, we played him and Jarvis over 35 minutes a game in that two-game stretch. That's too many. Uh, but it is what it is, especially when we didn't even have Anthony for, for Auburn. Uh, I thought he was really good for us early. 
uh, not as good late. I think he started the game three for four from the floor and finished five for 17. So you do the math. It, it wasn't there for us late. Uh, he's a kid that's had a lot of big moments uh, for Ole Miss and has helped us win a lot of games, and he'll continue to do so moving forward. I think they're third or fourth in the league in rebounding margin. Is this one of the more important games for your wings in terms of rebounding to help out guys I, like Anthony and Ladarius? Well, it's certainly going to have to be a team effort. I told our team we're going to have to get the majority of the rebounds that fall under the rim. You know, probably only 20% of rebounds are above the rim. They're probably going to get the majority of those. Uh, we've got to get all of them that are under the rim, which is, which is most of them. We've got to do a good job of fighting for 50-50 balls. We've got to put our bodies on them. Uh, and, and we've got to put ourselves in a position to come up with the ball. We play a possessions game. You know, finally we, we win a rebounding battle, our first in seven games in Starkville. The difference being, though, we turned it over 16 times. We've only turned it over 16 or more times twice, and those are two losses for us. Not only were there turnovers, but they were live ball turnovers, which led to 25 points in the open floor for State. So if you give them 25 points in numbered breaks, and then they shoot 30 more free throws than you do, one kid makes more than your whole team shoots, then you're going to put yourself in a position to lose road games, and that's exactly what happened. Andy, Talking about the rebounding. I'm sorry. Oh, Andy, uh, when you look back on how wide State got so many free throws, what, what stuck in your mind defensively? I thought, I thought uh, Craig Sward was very, very aggressive in attacking the basket is what he does. And then to, I think it was Parrish's point earlier in this, in this press conference, uh, we didn't do a good job of, of sealing the floor and, and, and filling gaps, which allowed him to drive. And he was very aggressive in, in getting the ball to the basket. Uh, conversely, we weren't as aggressive, and, uh, and we settled. We settled with some floaters. We settled some on the perimeter. And, uh, and we have not, and let's, let's, let's be honest, we have not established a low post presence where we can throw the ball close and create contact. And as a result, uh, we have to play through the strength of what our players can do. On the rebounding, how did you feel like you guys competed with Gavin Ware, and how does he compare with O'Brien? Uh, different. I think Gavin is, is, is a big, strong presence. Uh, LSU is, is long and athletic and really play above the rim. Jordan Mickey is a, is a very long, athletic kid, as is Jarrell Martin. And Johnny, um, I don't know if you've seen LSU this year, but he's really transformed his body. He's, he's, uh, he's playing at a very high level. And of the three, he may not be as athletic as the other two, but he's still very, very athletic and an above-the-rim guy. Snoop and Derek, a couple back-to-back double-digit games for them without Marshall these last two SEC games. Do you feel like you're close to finding that consistent third score? I hope if there's, if there's, if there's ever any silver lining through the first two without Marshall – is the fact that Snoop had to be more aggressive and make some plays. And I thought in the second half in Starfall when we were making a run and, and developing a lead, Snoop was the one making the plays for us. So uh, if he can carry that confidence moving forward now that we're into league play, which honestly is when he started playing better for us last year, uh, that would be an added bonus. Last question. With, with Marshall coming back and, and George playing more off the ball, what kind of role do you see for those areas? Kind of coexisting with, with the other guards? Well, he's got to stay aggressive, and he, and he, drink, and he brings a completely different skill set. You know, he's a guy that, that I think can facilitate off the dribble because of his size and his strength. We run a lot of action to try to get him to the paint, and then we're, we're dependent upon him making the right decisions. If you remember at the end of the Auburn game, he had a great uh, penetration. Biggs help up. He dumps it down. A.J. gets a dunk, which was a huge play for us down the stretch. So not only is it about his ability to make shots, I think he can, he can get shots for other people, i.e. Jarvis, who's doing a much better job of, of making spot-up jumpers. Obviously, that's what Marshall does best. And we've got to help Derek as well because of his limitations with size. We've got to create some space for him to make open shots. Thanks, Josh. Thanks. Thanks.